You're watching the new Stack Makers, a podcast for people who develop, deploy, and manage at scale software. For more information and articles about at scale technologies, please visit thenewstack.io. Now enjoy the show. Okay, at this point of the conference, I think I'm a little tipsy. I don't know. I mean, not because I because I was out last night or I was out this morning, but I mean, like, there's just such a daze of discussions here about AI agents. It's just kind of like overwhelming to some extent. So I want to talk about some of the main themes that we're hearing about AI agents at the Google Cloud Next conference. And I'm joining me today are Johnny Kieran, MSV, independent analyst, frequent contributor to the new stack and fellow guests on our podcast often, and Frederick Lardenois, our senior AI editor. And this is, our, I think, our first recording together. Yeah. It's the first time we're recording together, yeah, yeah while, ever. While you're part of the new stack. That's right, so, yes. Welcome here to you both. Thank you. So let me start with you, Johnny, in terms of themes. You know, Sanjeev talked with Frederick, and I know that they, either Sanjeev was saying that uh, agentic AI is a little bit over-indexed here. But is it, in your view, um, but if it's if, you know, even if it is, what are the themes you're hearing that kind of helps you get through all the, you know, the tons of discussion on the topic? Right. So one of the predictions for 2025 for me was first-party agentic frameworks. Last year, we have seen Crew AI, Autogen, Llama Index, Langchain, but these were all third parties. They didn't own the models, they didn't own the platform, they only provided the framework. But this year, we're actually seeing first-party agentic frameworks. First, it was OpenAI that launched an agent's SDK a couple of weeks ago, and now it is the turn of Google to launch something native, which is their agent SDK. So that is a big deal. And Microsoft is also following the suite with uh, open AI based agent SDK. And I'm expecting a lot from Build, which is next month. So it's a big news and a splash that Google is launching their first party agentic framework. It's a big deal. It's a big deal? Yeah, I agree. ADK, right, is what you're talking about here. And I think the fact that they're going up against Autogen from Microsoft and Langchain, Langgraph, all these. It's really interesting. It uh, shows that it's a market where there's still a lot of room for those kinds of things, right? But also Google doing this in a relatively open way is interesting because you can bring any kind of model. It connects to any kind right. of framework, right? So that, that seems to be where they're going anyway with a lot of this stuff this year with, you know, their model gardens and all those things. So. Right. Yeah, I think the ADK together with A2A right. and the agent engine, it's like really shows that they're all in right. on this right now. So yeah, they're definitely all in. I guess the question is, are we seeing this as a watershed moment for agentic AI across the industry? Or I always get a little bit wary because I think, you know, we've seen different trends emerge. I guess my question to you is, is is this one feel real to you after this show? Yeah, I think it already felt real before this. I think this is just Google jumping into the water a little bit deeper than, you know, agentic AI is definitely a thing right now. I think nobody can argue that anymore. And it's really just now Google. And it will last. I think it will last. Everybody I've talked to here wants to talk about agentic AI. It doesn't matter if it's a startup or somebody as large as as GitHub, yeah. everybody's talking about it. And in, they're in using the, it. So in these introductory conversations about agentic AI, what, what sticks out to you? You mentioned the framework, A to A, anything else? And maybe you could just kind of provide some context for what these things are. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are still figuring out really what are agents, right? I think for a lot of people, that they're, they're thinking about agents as almost little microservices that just perform one function and not much more than that. I think what we're really getting to now with all of these frameworks and MCP on top of that is really agents that can perform actions on behalf of somebody, do some reasoning and then perform actions based on that. I think that's really where we're getting at. Next step being some way more autonomous functions, I would think. So Johnny, you know, when you're thinking about these these pieces they put together, Maybe you can review them once more, how you, how you critique them and what we still see as uh, their need for. Right, absolutely. So if we go back to last year, 
uh, Google Cloud Next, models were the big thing. The models were the first class citizens of the Gen AI ecosystem. What's very interesting is Google has started to treat agents as the first class citizens of the ecosystem. Just like we had model garden for Vertex AI, and then the model runtime, uh, the, the search and the tools and the entire stack, now they have an end-to-end -end stack for models. They have a, uh, sorry, for agents. Now they have an agent garden where you know, they have published first party agents that you can explore and consume. And I expect third parties and customers to populate that with more and more agents. So that is like an agent garden, a registry of agents. And then there is an agent runtime, which tra tracks observability, model evaluation, agent evaluation, hallucination index and all of that. That is very, very important. And then there is an agent engine, which is meant for developers to actually build end-to-end -end agents. And it is complemented by an SDK. And at the top of the stack is agent space, which is a no-code, low-code environment for enterprises. Now, if you actually look at this entire stack, it's almost parallel to the Vertex AI model ecosystem. Now, this is becoming a first-class citizen in the Vertex AI and the uh, overall Gen AI ecosystem. And, and uh, there is clarity in how Google is articulating this entire stack. Uh, there is something for enterprises, there is something for developers, there is a runtime, and there is a, a, a marketplace or a registry of multiple agents. And that is coming out as a very cohesive, very well-articulated story. How would you critique it? Uh, I looked at some of the other complementary announcements like A2A and MCP. I think there is a lot of work that needs to be done there. It looks like a very rushed through announcement. I looked at the A2A spec. Uh, support for MCP is good, but A2A seems to be a slightly half-baked. You know, it, it, it needs more work, uh, but the vision is good, but their implementation needs a lot of effort. Do you have any insights on that? No, I was just, I was surprised that they didn't provide any documentation ahead of time. It, that also made me feel that it was rather rushed right. when they made the announcement because they didn't provide us with any information at the time. Related ATA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the other topic, you know, we're talking about, you know, Vertex and all of that, um, always, always reminds me of the early days of the cloud native Kubernetes ecosystem, Absolutely. right? And we're just figuring out how all of these pieces fit together. And one thing that Alex and I talked to Gabe Monroy, now at Google, yeah. uh, at the party a few days ago, and he brought up security, which I think is another topic that still, it always feels like it's last, and people right. should think about that a little bit earlier. Right. But I think people are still figuring out how does that fit into this. Right. How does it fit in, Johnny? Have you seen any evidence of how Google's addressing the security, security issue? Security seems to be an afterthought for models and also for agents. Yeah. I haven't heard anything concrete about how to integrate security. You know, but the other pieces like guardrails are in place, uh, which is actually a good sign, and model evaluation and agent evaluation is a part of the stack. But security needs to come in. Authorization and authentication for agents is a, is a very important aspect. And that's where ideally A2A comes in, but I haven't seen exactly, exactly. how they're implementing that yet. You did present on debugging, and so there's some, you know, not, not direct correlation, but there is some correlation to that. Right. So what's interesting is uh, Google is bringing Gemini into almost every component, every service of their cloud platform. This may be slightly a detour from what we are talking about, but Google has created an entire new ecosystem of applications. They launched something called ADC, an application design center, where you can interactively draw uh, your, your building blocks of your cloud infrastructure and push a button to deploy. Behind the scenes, it applies a Terraform template to whatever you have drawn on the canvas and pushes that into GKE or Cloud Run, which is very interesting. And then they uh, augmented a service called App Hub, which is like drawing a boundary to various services that are fragmented over multiple organizations, multiple folders, multiple projects. It brings application context. That's something that they launched. And that brings us to something called application-centric observability. Because observability today is like a data lake anything and everything will feed into the observability data lake and it's it's like finding the needle in a haystack. Right. So now what they have done is that they have drawn a boundary, a dotted line uh, within observability data lake, which will give you like a uh, zoomed in perspective of observability that matters to the application that you have defined in App Hub. 
So it is almost like zooming 2x or 3x into observability telemetry uh, and going straight into what matters to your application. Earlier it was like all over, events from Google platform, control plane, everything. But now you can apply filters and you can zoom into really what matters. And on top of that, they brought Cloud Assist, which is Gemini Cloud Assist. Now, when you bring the logs and the observability as context to Gemini, it can help you perform root cause analysis, triage issues, and uh, basically help an SRE, you know, get to the uh, debugging and remediation pretty quick. This is where it gets really interesting to me because now you're talking about the, the enterprise architecture, right? You're talking about the enterprise stack mm. and how that's evolving with this. How do you yeah, see that? I, I don't think we really know yet what no. it's going to look like at this no. point. I think that's something all the enterprises are trying to figure out at the same time. But that time. observability question is a good one, isn't it? Yeah, and we've you know we've done that in the again in the cloud native space. We went through all of this, right? With and then had open source projects right. to help us with dealing with that, and maybe some of the learnings from that. Like open telemetry. That's yeah, exactly. what I'm wondering open about. Telemetry, Does example. open telemetry yeah. uh, um, play a role there? Make sense here? Does it play a role? Yeah, yeah, of course. Now, open telemetry is becoming the level playing field across mm, all yes. hyperscalers, all observability companies. Everyone is agreeing to that, which is a which is a great sign. I think it the is. industry needs that. Just to add to that, I think some of the discussions we've had here too is like we're taking a lot of the learnings from that. And at the end, underneath all of this is Kubernetes and you know the same cloud native technologies just with GPUs added or TPUs right. added on top of it. Yeah, I, right. wanted, I wanted to get to that because you know we, we, we came from last week at KubeCon and one of the discussions I heard is that you know, will K Kubernetes miss this moment? Will, you know, will the window pass on Kubernetes? Now, arguably, no. No. You know, Kubernetes is already deeply integrated into um, the, um, you know, the major uh, hyper AI providers out there. Right. Right. But it doesn't yet have the, I don't know, deep mind thinking of the AI engineer necessarily. And so, did you... Did you see any of that? Do you see that need, you know, coming out of that out of KubeCon into here, for that kind of deeper look at, at uh, Kubernetes and how you think about primitives, for instance? So uh, where Kubernetes matters is inference at scale. So when you deploy models on Kubernetes, you need to have inference. But models are not just monolithic models. So if you look at foundation models, there are two parts to any model. One is the foundation model published by someone like Mistral or Llama or, uh, or, or, or Gemma by Google. And then you have fine-tuned adopters that are specific to that model. Now, serving a fine-tuned model is far more complex than serving a monolithic foundation model. What I'm actually seeing as a trend is the cloud native ecosystem is gearing up to support the nuances of hosting, deploying, and performing inference on these uh, fine-tuned models. You know, for example, the API gateway project from you know, Cloud Native Ecosystem is now augmented to support the LLM aware routing and LLM aware inference. So that's a good sign. Solo.io and others have partnered together to launch an Envoy AI gateway. That's another good sign. So the innovation that I'm seeing in the Cloud Native Ecosystem is centered around AI inference and making sure that Kubernetes is LLM aware. It knows what it is actually talking to. What's the intersection of AI agents and Kubernetes and TU? In terms of? In terms of like, what's the, what's, what's the natural fit there? I expect that if you're running multiple clusters, then, and you're running multiple applications on each of those clusters, right? You're gonna be able to run then, um, uh, you know, you know, a framework, you know, on those mm -hmm. on those clusters. So there seems to be some fit. Oh yeah. Some to be some. You know, there seems to be a real kind of like intersection there. Yeah, and I had this discussion yesterday with uh, Bobby Allen from Google as well, right? He's a the cloud therapist, but deep in the Kubernetes ecosystem, and he was talking about how that's real. You mentioned the gateways, for right. example, right? That's exactly what's happening there. The that community is very aware of where these use cases are right. going and figuring out how to best adapt to that right now. And in some ways, a lot of that, you know, these models are stressing that 
that kind of system to a degree that maybe other workloads are not right now. So everybody's benefiting from it in the end. Right. So I have a different take, uh, Alex. So Kubernetes has two dimensions when it comes to AI. Number one, Kubernetes has the runtime and orchestrator for agents, right. which we discussed in our podcast a couple of weeks right. ago. Kubernetes has the ability to orchestrate anything that is granular and uh, resource driven. So agents are not like completely new. They are microservices uh -huh. which are stateful. Okay. So Kubernetes is gearing up and it is getting ready to orchestrate agents. That is one dimension. The other dimension is when you bring agents closer to Kubernetes control plane and operation side of it, Kubernetes can become self-healing and autonomous. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's interesting. This is applying agents to ops. Mm. Uh, and, and Kubernetes operations are pretty complex. No. Yeah, and I get and I get a little curious about that because you know LLMs are not exactly deterministic. Right, <laughs> right. That's that's where you need the guardrails at that point too. <laughs> but, but you know the the AI agentic environment or the world now has SRE agents, which are fine tuned and which are aligned with a typical day job of an SRE. Now, when you bring one of those SRE agents to Kubernetes, the, and and you put close to the control plane, it has all eyes and ears to the telemetry data coming out of the control plane. It can predict, it can remediate, it can ensure that the desired configuration state of the cluster is always green. And that's going to make Kubernetes self-reliant, self-healing and almost autonomous. And we'll get there. Uh, that's going to be a very powerful intersection of AI agents and Kubernetes operations. I guess in conclusion, I'm wondering about who do you see at this conference? Who are the people that you see? Who are the, you know, who are the personas that are emerging you know, in this new world of AI agents? Agent developers, agent operators. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a whole new ecosystem. And it, it, it has a parallel to the software life cycle, software design uh, environment. So I, I see this as a parallel new universe, uh, which is going to create agentic developers, agentic administrators, agentic SREs, agent ops. So we are creating a new whole ecosystem. Who are the people that you've been talking to that were surprising to you, or just was it the same kind of crowd you've seen year after year? It's very much the same crowd that I've seen before here. I've yet to meet an agent <laughs> developer who described himself as or herself as that. But um, no, I think it's very, I haven't seen a big difference here in who is here. It's the same developer type, right. you know, obviously everybody wants to talk about AI now, not just agents. I don't think everybody's ready for agents yet, right? But a lot of people that I've talked to are still figuring out how right. to really bring AI into their companies. Yes. And that's for a lot of companies that's still so early. We're really far ahead by talking about right. agents Agreed. to some degree. What I, what I mentioned was a very forward looking view. Currently, developers are still learning. You know, it's almost like cloud developers to cloud native developers. We have seen a transition, like how do you learn microservices? How do you apply best practices? Now these developers are learning how to apply best practices of agentic workflows, and a subset of them will focus more and more on agentic. I think that's a great place to end our conversation. I want to thank you both for taking some time today. Johnny, always great to see you. Frederick, thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.